Winter's over, and it's straight ahead is the condensed version of my series of the ride through Wyoming. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a beverage and a snack, enjoy this wild and wonderful ride through the heart of Wyoming on the Wyoming VDR. Well, it's Friday, August 12th. We finally packed up, leaving Vancouver, Washington area, headed for the Wyoming VDR. made it to Walla Walla, Washington. Well, it's day two, about 8 a.m. Joe needs coffee. Now we're off to a good start. We're entering uh, the state of Idaho. Here in Grangeville, I'm gonna head out up into Nimbar Mountains. Wow, beautiful. Just beautiful. Wow. I hope you're getting this dimensions of this as I'm seeing it because it is awesome. the dirt now, Magruder Corridor. Well, just past 14 mile campground, 12 miles to Poet Creek Campground. That's where I'm hoping to stay. I'd sure like to be rid of this uh, extra weight on the back of my bike though. Oh, the air smells so sweet. Got a flat front tire going flat. like a pinch flat. Oh, go boarded. It's 5.30, 5.34. Ah. Moon's still showing right up there. morning cold shower wake you up okay let's get out of here nice nice quite rough at times 10 to 15 mile an hour in max because I do not want to pinch tube again and I could use something to eat looks like that's popped off hills is steeper than it looks on camera as usual and you lose concentration for an instant and the bike is someplace you don't want it to be Just stopping for a little snack since I didn't need anything but a snack for breakfast not even a snack well, only about 65 miles to go. Thank you. Looks like some smoke back off over.
booked an old hotel in uh, Dillon, Montana, hit the pavement, and got in there kind of late in the evening and just fixed ramen noodles in my hotel room. Well, it's a new day. Hotel in Dillon, Montana. Hitting some tracks. Maybe a campground and then through Yellowstone tomorrow. We'll see how the day goes. So this is uh, Sweetwater Road out of Dillon. I think I'll be on it for quite a ways. Look at this. I was now headed into the open mining pit and it uh, wasn't long till several pickup trucks chased me down. I think I took a wrong turn. Yeah, a little confusing. That turn right back there. Uh, it's interesting how at the end of a long day, hot day like yesterday, get into the hotel and you think, man, I'm just going to hit the slab. I'm tired. Then you get a good night's sleep. You wake up in the morning and uh, you feel refreshed. And I say, boy, am I glad I'm doing this. Dug out into the hillside there. Well, it looks like we go that way. Might be a pot piece of shade to eat my sandwich. It's a two track, but might as well be a single track because you gotta stay in your rut. Have to go around. Hey Mary Lou, you're looking good there. You know where I can get a beer? No? Redhead. Look what's coming. Oh crap, oh crap. Oh shit. break and look around. Sorry to disturb your siesta. Thank you very much. Knock on wood, haven't biffed it yet, but it came close. Coming through. for supper. Pad Thai with chicken. I haven't had a freeze-dried meal in a long time. Let's see. Actually tastes pretty good. Well, sun is setting. Closing out on day four. I'm in a beautiful spot. Good morning. It's day five brisk. <sighs> the goal for today is to move on through Yellowstone National Park, straight over to Cody, Wyoming, perhaps a little further. The long-term goal is to reach Burgess Junction. At that point, which is just to the west of Sheridan, Wyoming, on your map, my son is going to meet up with me. He currently is riding his uh, motorcycle in from Georgia. We're going to meet in Burgess Junction and begin 
southward on the Wyoming BDR. Well, that's only taken about 25 minutes of in line in the heat. So I'm taking this routing through Yellowstone National Park as the most expeditious way for me to get to my destination, Burgess Junction, Wyoming. See if they have a uh, 21 inch tube to replace my one with a pinch flat. Shiny new tube. Uh, stay six of the adventure in Cody, Wyoming. Let's go. Uh, we're up there now. The old DR is just put put putting along. What are we having? Idaho and loaded potato hearty soup. Let's get after it. good welcome to the cabin and day seven of my adventure today we're going to await the arrival of my riding partner michael michael has arrived michael <laughs> well it's august 20. today's a relatively short ride get our feet wet get Mike used to uh, trail riding. We'll see what comes up. We're going down to 10 sleep and that's the destination about 128, 130 miles. Ready to go Mike? Ready. Let's go. Old Faithful, let's roll. There's our trail going right off out through there. Okay, great. One more coming. The weather's doing great for us. We got clear skies. We're in and out of lovely pine scented forests. Take a little break. This is one of the most enjoyable trails I've been on. I'm enjoying it. Good. The bike's doing great. The trail has turned quite a bit more challenging. We're just going to get down this safe bighorn viewpoint. And what a viewpoint it is. Man, this right here would be worth the whole trip. You know where I can get a beer?
this is just our first day on the trail and you can see from the video thus far already the varied terrain that we've been experiencing. Is that residual stuff I'm seeing? Yeah. Got the new plug in. See if we can make it 25 miles to camp and good food, micro beers. It's all thumbs up. We're waking up here in 10 sleep. Right in there, one of my starter mount bolts has worked loose. One cow, coffee shop. Good breakfast burrito, good Americano coffee. Fueled up the body, now I'm going to fuel up old Grey Bull. Hey goats, don't worry about it, we'll get our own beer. Yep, this deserves stopping. Sometimes you can get so caught up in uh, where you're going, you forget to just be where you're at. Hard to believe it's just a ghost town now. But Mike and I have to head out into the desolate, uh, wide open country, and uh, Shoshone is in our sights to get some gas, and we need to look for a place to camp. Heard a little coyote right off over there. Off we go. A nice campsite. We're on section five, headed south to Atlantic City through the Wind River Range.
way are we supposed to be going on that line? Uh, I think our trail is like right over there. All right, thank you, sir. Let's see which way that thing's moving. This mine uh, closed for the last time in 1949. Just a short ways down the road, our destination, Atlantic City, a uh, tiny little settlement that uh, I would go back to in a heartbeat. But right now, we're headed for the Mercantile. Here's a uh, dinner spot for the night. Historical site in its own right. It's neat that it's still being operated in. Good morning from Atlantic City, Wyoming. We are uh, waking up, got a little fire going, got get some coffee going. Yeah. I like this. Slowly waking up, having a cup of coffee or two, and not having to feel like you got to pack up and be out of here by out. eight in the morning or something. Well, we're out of camp. Stopped at Miner's Delight. We support BDR riders and leaky front tire is holding pressure. Good night's rest at a great campsite. Leaving Atlantic City on to section four of the Wyoming BDR. We're headed south to Alcova. This section is 148 miles, the most barren of probably all the BDRs, certainly on Wyoming. We don't know how bad it's going to get, but if you stick around to the end of this video, you're going to find out. You want to go in front? Sure. Okay. That's some challenging stuff. Some other riders headed north on some big adventure bikes. Good riders out of Colorado. We're getting tired though. Mike's got a bit of a headache. We've got a lot more ahead of us and it's going to get worse. I guess the road we're supposed to be on must be right over there. We might as well go ahead. Uh, I mean, two hours probably. I mean, if it's no worse than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do it. Okay. And down. No sign of Michael. It looked dry on top. Obviously, wasn't. And there she lies. Coming through that, I thought it was dry. Whoop, 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 boom. Glad you're all right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I got to slow my ass down. Mike's down. My little saw. 
I almost spiffed it myself. Mike took a pretty good spill and broke fairing off the right side of his BMW and a little bit of other damages. Right about now, I've had enough adventure for one day. End of section four, the section from hell. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Alcova and our campsite. I'm going to be taking a bath in that. Some coffee, eat some breakfast, and uh, go from there. Now we're out and on our way. That was just a really fine campsite there along Lake Alcova. Water was a great temperature. Took a bath refreshed myself and uh, washed up some clothes so section three stretches out before us the morning is fresh we're fresh what adventures awaits for us mike and i are ready to find out so let's go track so far this morning has been uh, wide open, pretty smooth. Up ahead though, some BB gravel on a hard surface causes me to crash. Came up over this rise, hard pack, gravelly sand. Wasn't even making a hard turn, man. It just went out from under me and did a 180. Knee pads did their job. A little light rain is starting to fall as we work our way through the Shirley Mountains and this active logging road. Logging operation has churned up some baby powder dust. Yeah, and it's about six to eight inches deep. Given up without a fight, that's for sure. Little stop here to take in the scenery, take a little breather, and uh, here comes some guys. Uh, another bikes, more bikes. Making our way down out of the Shirley Mountains now, and pretty soon we're going to hit the tarmac, make our way into Medicine Bow. Just eat our sandwiches that we've carried with us since uh, Alcova all morning here in front of JB's along the curb. But the day is getting long, the trail is calling us on to our destination of Elk Mountain, where we'll camp for tonight coming into view right around this corner is the dark blue outline of our destination elk mountain sticking up on the horizon had a fantastic gentleman inside it was closing time already but he said you guys come in and said we're looking for a place to camp he says i will tell you where you can camp all right outside of town if you'd like what do you think that's good <laughs> Headed out into the darkness to find a campsite that had been recommended to us. You're going to see what the camp looks like now as the morning comes on and the day gets started.
about to leave our BLM site right at the base of Elk Mountain. Entering the National Forest here now. Mixtures of aspen and tall pine. Little side run up to Canada Peak. mountain the opposite side we camped on the other side of that and we've ridden up through here this morning now we got some raindrops hitting this but I think we're gonna ride out of it pretty quick well, we're leaving the dirt and gravel behind us now. We're on Highway 130 called the Snowy Range Road. It's closed in the winter. You can imagine the snow that's here at that time. Oh, yeah. It's going to rain. I'm pretty sure we're going to go through that. So I'm going to get my rain jacket out. Yeah. Is that in here or in there? Coming into view shortly here on the left is Medicine Bow Peak at 12,019 feet. Well, the snowy range there behind me and uh, a little bit of ice falling with the rain. We got maybe 15 miles to get into Centennial. Centennial, Wyoming. Got a hotel for a change. And uh, Mike had to hit the road. He's headed back to Georgia. He left about an hour ago. Gonna miss my wingman, but uh, we've had a great time. For now, I've got to do some maintenance. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give it the old thumbs up. Right over here is a playlist you can click on and watch the entire series if you choose. To my loyal subscribers, you are awesome. Plenty more adventures being planned. Maybe I'll see you out there. <laughs>